And speaking of wide receivers without contracts who didn't show up for the start of the voluntary workout program, C.D. Lamb. The C.D. Lamb of it all is fascinating because that just continues to play into this narrative that the Dallas Cowboys have basically done nothing. Also not there for the Dallas Cowboys, Micah Parsons not there. Both players in need of contract. Both players want new deals. And uh, Robert Griffin said earlier this week on our show, they've had the worst offseason. C.D. Lamb obviously believes that his time has come to be paid, and I don't know that we'll see him around Dallas until he gets the type of contract that he deserves. How about him, Cowboys? Angry Cowboys fan, I get down the line. What's going on, Cowboy Nation and angry Cowboy fans around the world? Y'all know who it is. It's your boy, the Angry Cowboys fan, bringing you my raw and uncut 24-7, 365. So if you're DC for life and want some classy Cowboy content, drop a like on the video, share it with your friends, and please consider subscribing to the channel. If there is one show on ESPN that I love watching, I love watching me some get up with Mike Greenberg. A lot of the times they'll have some great analysts from the different guest commentators that they have on the show. It does go downhill whenever you have people like Dan Orvlosky or Bart Scott on. But for the most part, that show's pretty damn good. This morning was no different. On this morning's episode of Get Up, Mel Caper Jr., Lewis Reddick, and Adam Schefter join Mike Greenberg to discuss C.D. Lamb choosing to skip out on voluntary workouts with the Dallas Cowboys. Somehow the conversation switched back to Dak Prescott and his contract negotiations. I don't know how that happened, but we're going to take a listen to what these gentlemen had to say, and you know what we're going to do, Cowboys Nation. We're going to come back and unpack my raw and uncut. So, Angry Cowboys fans, let's go ahead and take a listen. So, Mel Kuyper Jr., if we get around to the end of the first round, in a world in which Jerry Jones doesn't decide if Dak is the long-term quarterback in Dallas anymore, Dak decides that. <laughs> if we roll around to late in that first round, and Bo Nix is sitting there, and Michael Penix is sitting there, and Roger Goodell tells us the Cowboys have decided to do that, what will you, Mel Kuyper, say? Be surprised because the offensive line needs to be fixed. Dak Prescott's the quarterback last time I checked, and the offensive line is a major issue. That center spot and what they do with Tyler Smith. You need a guard, you need a left tackle. Moving left tackle, you need a guard. So you need two offensive linemen, you need a wide receiver to help out C.D. Lamb in that group, and you need a running back. Running back's a big need area. Power's not there. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is this is a pivotal draft. The Cowboys need a strong draft. The pressure is on, whether it's Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma, Amarius Mims from Georgia. They need an offensive tackle in the first. They you go Zach Frazier, center West Virginia, Jackson Powers Johnson, Oregon center, or they could go running back Jonathan Brooks from Texas, or a host of five, six running backs, guys, that I think are going to mm -hmm. be good third-round picks. We know who those six are. So to me, the offense needs help around Dak Lewis. Don't draft yep. anybody, because guess what? You're in trouble if you don't get Dak some help. Why do we have to ask this question all over again? Don't get me wrong. There is one way that I would draft a quarterback in this year's draft. I would draft a quarterback if I was able to trade down, trade down a couple spots, gain more than just one extra pick. I'd have to have two or three extra picks. If I could trade down with the Buffalo Bills because we all know that they're hurting because of Stephon Diggs going to the Texans, I could gain a couple of picks. That would be the only way that I would get a quarterback in this year's draft. If we're stuck with the seven picks that we already have, I'm drafting in order to protect our current quarterback in the pocket. Now on to the second clip that I got for you. Lewis Reddick has some sobering words for Cowboys Nation and the Dallas Cowboys organization. So let's hear what Mr. Reddick had to say, and then we're going to come back and unpack. Take it away, Mr. Reddick. With you 1,000%. Look, you say they may need one offensive lineman. I think they need three. I think Because I think Tyler Smith is going to left tackle, and they are going to need a left guard center, and they're going to need a right tackle also. Because really, Zach Martin's the only person you can count on right now. He's the only guy you can count on. And you're right. Who is running the football for them? And if this is a football team that right now they believe internally and everyone externally believes that it's going to be a player to some degree in the postseason, 
Right now, you're kidding yourself. As this team is presently constructed, they may not even make the playoffs, mm. quite honestly. And if you draft a quarter, you need an impact player in the first round. You need somebody who can step on the field week one and be playing for this yeah. football team. You don't need to be addressing the quarterback position right now. Lewis Reddick had some major advice for Cowboys Nation. The way the team looks now, we may not even make the playoffs. Honestly, Every offseason sounds like this. The talking heads tell us that we're not going to win too many games. Last year, they had us winning nine and a half games after the schedule came out. What happened there? Another 12-win season. I somewhat agree with Reddick, though. I agree with his urgency when it comes to the offensive line. With the loss of Tyron Smith, we could be looking for another left tackle as well as a center in this year's draft. No matter who you have a signal caller, you will need an offensive line to protect him and keep him clean in the pocket. Moving right along to the third clip that I got for you. I had to get this clip in of Adam Schefter. After his thoughts about the Dallas Cowboys being a sleeper team in the draft for drafting the quarterback early, <laughs> he had to come back on this episode and walk his statement back a little. So let's take a listen to what Adam Schefter had to say, and then y'all know what we're going to do. We're going to come back and unpack my raw and uncut. Take it away, Mr. Schefter. I think Dallas is in the quarterback market later on, Greeny. I don't think that they could afford to go quarterback high. As Mel said, just too many needs. That offensive line needs to be addressed. Don't have a running back. Need another wide receiver. And this is a team that they have said that they're all in on. Well, it's hard to be all in when you have that many holes that need to be addressed. Saying that, if there is a quarterback in the mid-rounds, what round was Dak drafted in? Round four. And I think when we start to get into that range, I think they have to start looking to add another one. They traded a pick for Trey Lance last year. He's still there in Dallas. But there's the possibility that Dak can just walk out the door after the season. And so if there is a quarterback you like, that's always valuable to get, even with all the holes that must be addressed earlier in Dallas. Oh, now it's later on, huh, Adam? Adam Schefter asked what round Dak Prescott was drafted in, which everybody knows that it's the fourth round. A draft pick we do not currently have this year, Mr. Adam Schefter. The fourth draft pick is sitting on the bench, soaking it all in. With the remaining draft picks that we do have, we need to fortify the offense and the defense. This draft cannot be a draft where we take risk, in my opinion. Draft great and draft around the much-needed positions. Y'all ready for my raw and uncut? Y'all ready? Let's get it. As for Micah Parsons not attending voluntary workouts, it's nothing. He didn't attend last year's voluntary workouts either. When it comes to C.D. Lamb not going, that may have sent a little message to the front office that if you're not going to get me a contract, I'm not going to come out and chill when it's voluntary. Adam Schefter said that we may not see C.D. Lamb until his contract is done predicting a holdout. My 10 4 hat conspiracy theory is that Jerry and Steven are going to wait until after the draft to see who they get. Looking at the players that the Dallas Cowboys had for visits, there's one wide receiver on the board. I wouldn't be surprised if the wide receiver is drafted in the second round to give Jerry a little bit more leverage when it comes to C.D. Lamb's contract negotiations. Somebody like either Keon Coleman or Brendan Rice. As for Devontae Smith getting paid from the Philadelphia Eagles, great. Now it sets a standard. Just like Josh Allen and the Jacksonville Jaguars, as well as Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions. Now these front offices can go in there and compare what these players got and what they feel is a proper contract. If I were in C.D. Lamb's position, I would want more than Devontae Smith and a longer contract. I'm going to want more guaranteed as well. Guaranteed money being around, let's say, the Tyreek Hill area. Micah's going to want more money than Josh Allen as a DN, and so on. I do feel that Dak Prescott may look at Jared Goff's contract and take it into consideration. Like, he's taken two teams to the NFC Championship and one to the Super Bowl, and he's getting paid between 45 to $50 million a year. What if he took $53 million a year? Would some of Cowboys Nation still be asking for his exit next year? 
Just just a question. Just a question. Just remember, you'll be asking for the next quarterback to be leaving if the front office doesn't change their ways. We somehow forget that because we're too busy placing blame on Dak Prescott. Damn it. I hate talking contracts because I can't stand pocket watching and it feels like I'm pocket watching, fellas. Y'all get y'all money. Every single penny of it. On the brighter side of things, there's a lot of time between now and the 2025 offseason. The team and these gentlemen have time to either get a contract negotiated and a deal done or make the decision to test the open market. Right now, it's about getting the pieces during and after the draft to fortify the offensive line, get a run game, and get some run stoppers. I don't care if you have Dak Prescott, Bo Nix, Trey Lance, Michael Penix Jr., Tom Brady, hell, even Tom Hanks for crying out loud. It's not going to make a difference if you don't have a line to protect him and more weapons to help him. We will be in the same situation no matter what quarterback. This has been your boy, the Angry Cowboys fan. What did you think about what the fellas on Get Up had to say? What show on ESPN is the most tolerable to you? Why not have that conversation in the comments section? If you're liking the content I bring you and you want to help the channel get out to even more Dallas Cowboy fans, drop a like on the video, share the content, and tell a friend who is a Cowboys fan what we do here. If you're DC for life, even though it's hard out here for a pimp and a Cowboys fan, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell so you can be notified whenever I go live or whenever I release a video or a podcast. Cowboys Nation, the draft will tell us a lot when it comes to the future of the Dallas Cowboys. I hope it's a future that sees us making it to the Super Bowl and not one that sees us at 8-9. and nine. This has been your boy, the Angry Cowboys fan, and I'm out.